Okay, everyone. Um, I'm going to talk you through the rule seven of quantum mechanics. Um, I will say this is one of the most complicated rules um, that exists. Um, and so I strongly recommend, please, please, please go to page 112 of your texts um, and, and please just read through this. Um, it is, uh, it is, um, it is not the easiest thing to understand. Um, but I will try to walk through you through it as close as as closely as possible. The, the the reason we're even bothering with this, so you might say like, well, okay, if it's so difficult, why are we even bothering with any of this? Um, the main reason is that um, the, the we haven't talked about anything about what actually happens with time. So um, if you think about actual normal mechanics, um, with normal mechanics, we're always concerned with time. So Newtonian mechanics. We're always looking for velocity versus time or position versus time or all this stuff versus time. Um, we actually don't have anything about time in any of our um, systems so far. Um, and so what we're going to do in, in, this, uh, in this part is actually talk about what happens um, with a quantum system over time. Basically, how does it change as time goes along? Um, uh, as a first important step, it's important to note that actually um, for things that are actually in energy eigenstates, um, which is what we've been mostly dealing with so far, um, they don't change with time. And so that's why we haven't had to deal with it so far. Um, but we're going to talk about a special case here where um, where uh, the, the time, um, where things do change with time. Um, I want to, so, so I'm going to try to do something similar to what the book does, but a little different. Um, and again, I'm going to assume that you at least have access to the book. I'm not going to kind of define everything ahead of time. I just want to work through an example uh, to kind of show you what happens. Um, so the basic idea is this. We're going to first look at, in terms that this is weird, but to know anything about the time, we need to know something about the energy um, states of the um, of the actual quanton. So we're going to assume this special case where um, if the quanton is in a plus, um, so if, oops, that's a good start. Um, if uh, the quanton is in a plus z state, we're going to assume it has some energy. Um, uh, uh, the energy we'll just say is equal to, let's say, just E0, where it's just any energy. And if you don't like writing E0, write three joules. I don't actually care. It, does, it doesn't matter. Um, uh, if, if it bothers you to have this in terms of variables, um, then, then put a number there um, or put it in 5 EV. I don't, it doesn't actually matter. Uh, but let's say that um, in plus C, it has an energy equal to E0. And then we're going to say when it's in the minus z state, um, it has an energy just equal to zero. Okay, and it turns out that we can actually set, um, if you remember from way back in conservation, um, we can always set one of our energies equal to zero because energy um, can always, you can always add a constant to any energies. Um, and as long as you add that same constant to every single energy, um, uh, you're, you're allowed to do that. So we can always make at least one of the energies equal to zero. So basically, this is a case where if the quantum is in a plus z state, it has an energy equal to E0. If it ha it's in the minus Z state, it, it, it has an energy equal to zero. I'm going to change those because that's going to be really confusing when I talk about that. Let's call this, instead of E0, let's just call it EA just so it doesn't get confusing. All right, so anyway, um, or e, e plus, let's do E plus. Eh, let's do EA. I like EA. All right, so again, if it's, in, if it's in the plus Z state, it has an energy of EA. If it's in the minus Z state, it has an energy equal to zero. Um, okay. All right. So what you do first this is, a, and and so 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 it turns out it's not super interesting if we start the the quanton out in a plus z or a minus z state. It turns out if we put in the plus z state, we can work this out. It'll just stay in the plus z state the whole time. If we put in a minus z state, it'll just stay in the minus z state the entire time. And you can work that out for yourself once I show you how to do this. But the more interesting thing is, let's put it in a state that isn't plus z or minus z. So we're going to put this in a um. Um, uh, let's put in an initial state. So a starting state um, is going to be uh, minus x. All right, and this is a little different than your book. Your book does plus x. Um, okay. So it turns out the first thing we need to figure out is we need to figure out how to write um, our initial state in terms of our energy eigenstates. Um, so what we need to do, um, so we need to write um, minus x in terms of 
uh, plus z and minus z. And we're going to do it like this. So we're going to say, okay, since we're starting out in minus x, can I write it as some constant, which I'll call plus, um, of plus z plus some constant minus of minus z? And this is the basic question. And it turns out we can always do this. Um, uh, so if you remember, minus x is actually equal to a square root of 1 half minus square root of 1 half. And so we need to write it as some constant times, if you remember, z is 1, 0, plus z is 1, 0, and it plus another constant, 0, 1. Okay? Um, so what you'll probably see, and, and the way that this works, whenever you're adding, um, sorry, whenever you're adding uh, vectors, um, you just go straight across. So it's going to be, so these, the, again, this is just like when we did momentum. So this just says the square root of 1 half is equal to c plus times 1 plus c minus times 0. All right, so if we take this first line, we're going to get square root of 1 half is equal to c plus times 1 plus c minus times 0. Now obviously this is going to equal 0 and so we're just going to get square root of 1 half is equal to c plus. So we've already gotten our c plus. If we take the the second line, so if we take this bottom line here, what we're going to get is we're going to get minus square root of 1 half is equal to c plus times 1 0 plus c minus times 0 1 um, so if I rewrite that just in terms of the bottom line, I'm going to get c plus times 0 plus c minus, oops, c minus times 1. All right, so that's just doing the bottom line. So this is the top line, and this is the bottom. Okay, um, and so again, we notice that this is minus square root of one half is just equal to uh, this is going to go to zero, and so this is just equal to c minus. So now we have our c minus and c plus. So it turns out we can now say okay, minus x is equal to um, square root of one half. That's our c plus times plus c plus negative square root of one half times minus z. And so now we've written minus x in terms of z's. All right, now it turns out once we do that, all right, this is our initial state. Now that uh, we've got um, the initial state, uh, we, now, we now want to go ahead and write the wave functions. All right, and so we're just going to use um, uh, q11, uh, sorry, q7 dot 11a and uh, q7 dot 11b equations to actually um, to write down what our um, function is as a function of time. So again, we're trying to find the function of time. It turns out we need to write two of them. We need to write a cosine and a sine. It turns out for those of you who, uh, who are interested in complex algebra, these are actually the real and the imaginary parts of the wave function um, that we're writing separately. But you don't need to know that to actually do this. All you have to do is be able to basically plug this in. Um, so that's just equal to um, the, the constant of the first energy eigenstate. So energy eigenstate, again, just means the one for which the energy is well defined. So we're going to... Um, we're going to start with the first eigenstate and multiply it by the cosine of e of the plus state t divided by h bar and multiply it by that um, uh, that state so this is this is the plus this is the plus z state um, that our energy is defined for all right so we're going to multiply this by plus z and then we're going to add the minus state oops we're going to add the minus state Uh, that should be a minus, e minus, t over h bar. And don't worry about the h bar. The h bar is just a constant. It's just a constant. It's actually just that h that we've been dealing with the entire time divided by 2 pi. 
All right, um, and then this is the minus C state, okay? Now, if you remember, again, just to make sure we're staying, uh, staying, uh, we understand what this is, this E plus means the energy of the state in the plus Z state, the one that is defined for. So this is that E A that we talked about before. So this is the energy in the, in the plus Z state. And then this is zero because that's the energy in the minus Z state, okay? Um, and these C plus and C minus are the same constants we just found before. All right, so we're just going to take square root of one half cosine of E plus, which is just EA, T over H bar, times the plus Z state. So this is the one zero state plus C minus. Uh, that was um, minus square root of one half times cosine of zero times t over h bar times the minus c state which is just zero one all right and i know it's looking complicated it's gonna it's gonna get less complicated in just a second first of all we know the cosine of zero so over here this is actually just one all right and so if we multiply these through it turns out constants just multiply through the matrices we're going to get um on the top we're going to get square root of one half cosine of e a t over h bar and then on the bottom we're just going to get zero because zero multiplied by anything just gives you zero same thing's going to happen on the top uh, over here on the top we're just going to get zero on the top because we're just multiplying zero times whatever any of this junk is on the bottom we're going to get one times this cosine but this cosine is just one so we're just going to get one times minus square root of one half so we're just going to square root of one half on the bottom and so it turns out that this whole state this psi of tc it turns out it's just going to equal square root of one half cosine of e a t over h bar minus square root of one half and that's the whole state now what i'd ask you to do right now is i'm going to pause for a second here or i would ask you to pause it go ahead and pause the video and i would recommend going ahead and trying to find um the actual uh the psi of um t uh the this the sine component of psi of t all right this is the this is the sorry this is the cosine component the c component of it go ahead and see if you can find psi of t of s which is you using q7.11b and then uh come on back here and see if you get the right answer okay we're back um so uh let's go ahead and look at this if we go ahead and try and do this calculation, again, we're just going to get um, the square root of one half times um, the sine of E A T over H bar times uh, plus Z plus um, square root of one half, or sorry, negative square root of one half times sine of zero times t over h bar times negative z. Now it turns out we're lucky because this sine of zero is zero and that's just gonna completely eliminate this entire term. And so we're in the end, we're just going to get this term right here. And so we're just gonna get square root of one half, uh, sorry, write this as a, 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 a um, matrix, square root of one half sine of EAT over h bar and then there's just going to be a zero down there. And so now we have our two states. So we have our we have our psi of t of c, which is just this last part here. So it's just this thing. All right. And then we have our psi of t of s. Now it turns out what we're and and it turns out what we're interested in though is what we really want to know is, okay, so so this is fine. This tells us what the state is going to be as a function of time. But again, if, you've, if we've talked about this before, like knowing the state doesn't actually tell us anything. It doesn't actually tell us anything physical about what's happening. It's just some mathematical thing that we've created to help us out. What we're really interested in is um, if I start in minus x, which is what we did, um, we can ask, how likely am I 
to find myself back in minus x at some time t. Um, given that the, the energy eigenstates are these plus and minus z's. Um, so it turns out to do that, that's when we have to use, um, that's when we have to use this equation um, q uh, 7.12, which actually tells us how to find the probability of finding it at some later time. So what we want to do is we want to find now, um, we want to find the chance of being in minus x given our function now that we have um, psi of t, uh, which is now psi as a function of t, it turns out if we take that and apply it on there and square it, we are going to get this answer. So to do that, we have, we're going to, set, to uh, calculate these separately. So first we're going to take, um, we're going to take our minus x, and apply it to our psi of t c, and we're going to square that. Okay. Um, all right. So how are we going to do that? Well, uh, um, let's uh, let's go ahead and write the um, minus x state. Oops, shoot. The minus x state is square root of one half, negative square root of one half. Um, but oh, we have to write it sideways, right? Square root of one half, negative square root of one half, and psi of t of c. Uh, it turns out is just the thing we wrote up here. Um, it's just the square root of one half cosine of e a t divided by h bar, and then we get minus square root of one half down here. All right, we're going to do our normal thing where we're going to multiply these through this way. And when we do that, we get square root of a half times square root of a half. So we just get one half times cosine of e a t divided by h bar. And then we get a minus one half square root of one half times a minus square root of one half. So we just get a plus one half. So that's what that's equal to. All right. Um, that's not the squared part. We're going to have to take. Um, uh, we, um, we're then going to have to take that squared. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, so we need this squared. When we square it, we're just going to get, um, and you can, you can look at this for yourself and kind of work this out for yourself, but we're just going to get one fourth cosine squared of E a T over H bar. Um, we're going to get a plus a one fourth. And we're also going to get a plus um, one half cosine e a t divided by h bar. Um, good, 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 good. Excellent. Um, and then we're going to go ahead uh, and do the same thing for our um, for our cosine or sine part of it. So let's do minus x psi of, uh, psi of t sine part squared. Um, again, we're just going to have the square root of one half, negative square root of one half, and that's going to multiply by our, um, our psi of t of sine. Psi of t of sine was up here. All right. That's square root of one half um, sine of e a t over h bar and zero. All right, again, multiply them through. This one's a little easier than the other one. Um, we just get one half sine of e uh, sine of e a t over h bar and we just need to square that whole thing all right um let's 
make sure I still have the square right there. Um, and what we're going to just get is one fourth sine squared of e a t over h bar. Now, this looks really, really messy because now we're going to have to add this and this. We're going to have to add those two together, but it turns out it's all going to work out really nicely, and I'll show you why. Um, we're going to start with a sine. Um, so we have one quarter sine squared of e a t over h bar. And I know it sounds like I'm getting excited. I'm always excited anytime things start to cancel out, and that's what's going to happen here. Um, so now we're going to add this. We're going to add add this guy here. All right. Um, so now we do a one quarter cosine squared of e a t over h bar plus one fourth plus one half cosine of e a t over h bar. Now, the exciting part is, is we can pull a one-fourth out of each one of these, and then we just get a sine squared plus a cosine squared. And for those of you who don't remember it, um, sine squared plus cosine squared is a trigonometric identity. Anytime you have sine squared plus cosine squared of something just by itself, that just equals one. And so it turns out if we pull out a one-fourth and add sine squared and cosine squared, we just get one-fourth for this entire term. All right, the entire term is just one-fourth. Then we need to add this extra one fourth over here, and then we get plus one half cosine of EAT over H bar, and that's just equal to one half plus one half cosine EAT over H bar, um, which is pretty cool. So, what that tells us is that the probability of being in minus x as a function of t is just equal to one half plus one half cosine of EAT over H bar. So what you can see is happening here, this is, this is the end, that's the end of the problem. What's happening here is that this thing is going from having a probability of 100%, so whenever, whenever, T, whenever the cosine is equal to zero, uh, we, uh, sorry, when the cosine is equal to plus one, we get one half plus one half, which gives us a 100% chance of being in minus X. And when this is equal to minus one, so when cosine of this is equal to minus one, you get a probability of zero. So this is actually fluctuating between having a hundred percent probability of being in plus uh, minus x to a to a zero percent probability of being in minus x to a hundred percent to a a zero percent to a hundred percent to a zero percent over and over again. And it, how fast it goes up and down is based on the energy uh, difference between the plus z and minus z state, which is a crazy thing that happens only in quantum mechanics. Um, and that's kind of the whole point of this whole thing. So um, I'm sorry, I know that was a long derivation. Again, I, I, there's no other way to do this uh, faster um, and more uh, and more straightforward. Um, this is about as good as it gets. Uh, so um, please go ahead and watch through that. Make sure you understand all of it. Um, and uh, hopefully uh, we can, um, uh, you can uh, try some of the problems and see if you can get that. Obviously, we'll also talk about that more in class. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Uh,